decentralized, to be, to be able to decentralize, they have to prove that they are competent. We see that it is a matter of developed countries where every region ha can, be, uh, ca can be competent. However, there are a lot of cases when the uh, centralized authorities are irreplaceable because there are a lot of regions that are not competent. They don't have enough uh, politically competent stuff. They don't have uh, financially in enough uh, resources to be independent and so on. That's why these points are not, uh, are not the points at all. So well, let's proceed to our case. The biggest question that you want... Yes, sir. Today we're not talking about abolishing centralized authority and making the so-called regions to suffer, but rather saying that it's regretting because we're looking at the efficiency, not by mechanization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not abolishing too. We are saying that if a lot of countries that are appearing right now, if they will be decentralized their authorities, their development will be much more less than the cases that we are speaking about right now. So why? Because centralized authorities are very important in case of transition politics. Uh, for instance, when the government uh, is, is changing from the uh, from the dictatorship to democracy, or when the government is changing from the uh, socialism to capitalism, it's very important. Why? Because there has to be very strong power that will regulate each one, each institution which is, uh, which is in our country. Why it's very important and very crucial here, ladies and gentlemen? Because we see that if every institution will have a uh, will, ha will be uh, very, uh, will have independence, it, it will be able to, <coughs> will be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to be competent and so on and so on. In that, in that case, they will not be able, uh, it creates some debates, it creates some debates, uh, in every region intends to uh, promote own policies. They want to promote own uh, policies and, and, and this debate unfortunately stagnates the real development. Instead of creating some captures, instead of cre uh, promoting some cultural and other policies, we forget about them and we are debating who is the leader, who is the institution that will lead us and in what way, in what direction we should lead. That's why in order to forget about that po uh, debate, initially we have to have strong power. And after that, when the government will be powerful enough, only in that case we can, uh, we can speak about the second priority political question. Second point, dear ladies and gentlemen, it is the rapid development of countries uh, securing, on, in our case, uh, this point will be uh, further developed by my, uh, by my colleague. It, 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 there are points about the uh, about development of business and the collection of experience. It will, uh, collection of experience as, as, as in front of the pluralism will be explained better. However, let me uh, right now speak about one major point, and the point about the minorities. Uh, we see that. <coughs> There are a lot of minorities all around the world, uh, who, uh, in the in the country, who is fighting for own, uh, who is fighting for own rights, who is fighting for own freedom and so on. And that people creates uh, instability. And if there is no strong power uh, that will be regulating them and will be treating them as equal and other institutions, in that case, uh, that that minorities will be assuming that they are discriminated and they will be uh, in, they will be insisting that. Uh, they are discriminated and they will be uh, fighting against government and fighting against other, uh, unfortunately, less powerful institutions because of decentralization. Because of that, because of this point, the minorities will not be developed enough. Uh, the point about the business and the point about 15 seconds, please, and the collection of experience will be explained by my colleague. And uh, we, because of that point, we are, uh, we are very proud to stay on the opposition side because we, we live in the country with a centralized authority and we are happy here. Thank you. First of all, I want to wait until the other judges have finished writing. Um, so, I'd like to thank the speaker for his very fine speech. And to continue the case for the government, I call upon the Deputy Prime Minister here. Now I'm going to uh, like start the rebuttal of their arguments and also by this rebuttal stressing our case. So, uh, he said that uh, the new countries are actually emerging and for them it might be very vital to have centralized authority which is actually irreplaceable for them. Okay, if we look at the small-scale countries, to, uh, maybe it may sound from the first, when you first hear it, maybe it can sound absurd, absurd why we should, we should, why it's not, it's better not to have the centralized authority. But for instance, for such countries, as such big countries as China, Russia, Great Britain, it's very important and vital uh, to have uh, the different system because in such a large scale, countries, uh, there is, we have to admit that the population and the people who are living there, they are not homogeneous. There is a different people, there is a different regions, and the regions are also not homogeneous because
because every region has different amount of the resources. Every region has own needs. Every region has own uh, has uh, the different things that they want to address. The different things that are unique and specific to them. And when we have centralized authority, these needs are actually ignored and not addressed. It was well uh, uh, described by Nur Sultan today. Also today they said that all resources should go and be collected in one region. For instance, let's consider uh, uh, Asana. What we are saying is that it's not a beneficial policy for the whole country, but rather a discrimination of the interests of all these different people in the smaller region. For instance, okay, let's consider Asana. We're having beautiful capital which can attract investment. But what we're having in the different and other parts of the country, for instance, there is much smaller regions who, don't, who are not able to actually, uh, who are not able to actually to no, uh, to sustain uh, themselves in the better way because uh, the policies that would be beneficial for them are not always implemented due to the uh, shortcomings of centralized authority system. Uh, what we will uh, now uh, later, what we believe today is that uh, like rather than making just the Potomkin, the Potomkin village expression for the whole country and saying that let, let's have something beautiful inside and unhappy population outside, it's much better to have uh, smaller regions that will be satisfied with them, that will be living uh, with will be uh, much better off and therefore we will have much much more stability within our country. Also today he said that bureaucracy is point that it's work because uh, we have electronic government. However, here you have to understand that bureaucracy is not simply about the paperwork, but rather about the mechanization process. Because currently in the status quo, what we have, if I'm living in this, like there is a particular region, and this region have certain needs. For instance, they want to, they need the road repairment or road construction, or they want to implement some sort of educational policies within the like, within their region. And uh, actually, in order to do so, they have to get this permission from the center. They have to, this permission has to be signed by the centralized authority and only after that it will proceed to this region and it usually takes a lot of, a, a lot, quite a long time. And as a result of this we are just having this region, uh, like the problem staying idle for a certain period of time, which is, we believe, very, very inefficient. And therefore, when we have don't, we, when we don't have centralized authority, we're not saying that all this region become autonomous and independent and will split. Uh, we are just saying that they will have a control of their own policies. And if they need some sort of actions right now, and these actions are crucial for them, they can actually implement them. And this is uh, where efficiency coming from. This is the point where the population becomes happier and more satisfied with the governmental policies. Uh, Moreover, uh, what uh, what they uh, say is that like uh, the little regions also need support, but what we usually see is that when we have centralized authority, the needs of the little regions are not actually addressed. For instance, let's remember the so the Soviet Union system. Uh, but before I proceed, okay. So you do really think that like it it could be better for Kazakhstan to invest all the money it spends on export to regions like Kostana and Ertobe rather than attracting international investors? Uh, well, what I, what I would say, probably yes, but this debate is not about the export. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, uh, today, uh, like, it's very important uh, to implement, uh, like, going back to the Soviet Union example. For instance, we have the centralized authority in the, central, uh, in the Soviet Union. And, like, uh, uh, in, in theory, it was supposed to operating well. However, it wasn't operating well, because, for instance, if we'll consider the Central Asian republics, their interest wasn't taken into consideration at all, because the Soviet Union was mainly concerned what is good for the Soviet Union, but by the Soviet Union, they usually mean the Moscow as the center of the Soviet Union, not all the Central Asian republics and states. And therefore, no, uh, many different policies were implemented, and these policies you know, were usually ineffective, because they didn't take into consideration the mentality of the region, they didn't take into consideration the capacity of the region, they were just able to sign what is the task, and then just wait for the uh, sound, uh, and then just force this region to do so. And these forceful mechanisms and these forceful actions usually were very ineffective and leads to the much uh, the worst consequences that could happen to these countries because they were not able to adjust to these policies or they were doing it in a forceful uh, way when they were not ready for this. And that's why it was a uh, very, very inefficient system. No. Uh, uh, also, uh, today, uh, they said that um, minorities are going to fight for their own right, so they will not develop, we have instability in our country. But if you look at the why do minorities have to fight for their own right? Because they feel themselves discriminated. And in our system, what we will have? The, in the system, when there is no centralized authority, the needs of the population, the needs of these minorities are addressed particularly, because they are able to perform different kinds of policy repairs on the roads, or if they need to establish some schools, for instance, which will teach in another language, they also can do it without 
without the commission of a centralized authority. And as, as a result, their, their level of dissatisfaction will actually decrease, significantly decrease, because now they will be able to satisfy their needs. Now they will feel that uh, the government is actually care about them. And if the people are satisfied, what is the point of making the revolt? What is the point of causing instability within the whole country? There is no point to do so. That's why we believe that when there is no centralized authority and each and every region is able to perform beneficial policies for them, it actually leads vice versa not to disability as was claimed by the opening opposition, but rather to the stability and happier population. Well, today we as the opening government uh, clearly explain to you what is the uh, effective government. The government